Welcome. So uh, what I have here is I want to be showing you how to graph um, equations, or we call quadratic um, equations this far, when it's in the form of y equals ax squared. Now a couple things to remember that the y and the x represent all the points that are going to make up our graph, and a is going to be a constant that's being multiplied. So the first type of problem we're going to do is what we call y equals x squared, which we, we're just going to produce what we call our parent graph of a quadratic equation. So in this case, if you're going to ask us what would our a be, well, in this case, we could say a is going to equal to 1. Could you say y equals 1 times x squared? Now, it's not very common for us to have to write 1 times x squared, but I want to graph the parent graph so we can get an understanding of what a quadratic is. And I'll also take a look at you know, the max or the minimum our line of symmetry and our intercepts. So when graphing a, t a, when graphing a quadratic, just like when we were graphing lines, it's important for us to understand that we're going to graph them on an x and a y axis, where here's our y axis and here's our x axis. Now remember, a quadratic or any graph is, go is going to be a set of x and y coordinates. Therefore, we're going to have an x for every point on the graph that's going to have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So what I need to do is I need to determine, well, what are my coordinates for my quadratic. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a table of values. Now, I'm going to explain about this in a little bit, but when we're looking at a table of values for an equation that's in the y equals ax squared, we don't need to worry about the line of symmetry because the line of symmetry is going to be 0. And we'll investigate that more when we move our line of symmetry. But since our line of symmetry is at 0, and I'll show you exactly how that's going to look in a second. We're going to start with our first coordinate we're going to find as being 0. Then what we're going to do is we're going to choose two values to the left of 0 and two values to the right of 0. Now, these values that you're going to choose can be anything. As long as once you find your line of symmetry, we can now choose any values to the left or to the right. I'm going to kind of keep this simple, though. I'm just going to do negative 1 and negative 2. These are your x coordinates. These are your y. And I'll do positive 1 and positive 2. So these are x coordinates that I picked out, right? I picked out negative 1, 0, and negative 2, positive 1, and positive 2. Those are the x coordinates. However, to make a point, I need to figure out what the y coordinate is. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my x coordinate in for x and then evaluate for y. So I have y equals negative 2 squared, and negative 2 squared, that equals 4. So therefore, the y coordinate is 4. So I go over to negative 2 and then up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, then let's do negative 1. y equals negative 1 squared. Well, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So that I go over negative 1, up 1. Then we plug in 0. y equals 0 squared, which equals 0. Then we do 1. y equals 1 squared. And this is a very important thing. Notice that the squaring function, if I have negative 1 squared, that gives me 1. And also 1 squared, that gives me 1. This is going to be very, very important for a pattern for us to be able to realize. So 1 squared is just going to be 1. And then 2 squared is going to be very similar. It's just going to be the same thing as negative 2 squared, which equals 4. All right, so let's plot the rest of these. So I have over 1, up 1. And then over 2, up 4. All right, so now to finish up graphing my quadratic, or the shape what we call it parabola, it's going to be kind of a little bit of a U-shaped, or bow mine out a little bit. So it's going to look like a U-shape. And this graph, as we keep on going farther to the left or to the right, these numbers are going to get larger for our y. So our graph is going to continuously go upward. Now, we're not going to plot every single point. So to show that this graph is going to continue continuously, we're just going to draw these arrows, meaning the next point that I pick is going to be higher up there. And, and we can even sh you know, show that. Let's just pick 3. Well, 3 squared would be 9. So if I went over 3, that's now going to be up over to 9. So you can see the graph is going to keep on going up. So let's go and talk about some of the important points of this graph. So we've discussed, well, we've talked about having the vertex. And the vertex, remember, was either the max or the min of the graph. And the vertex is also a point. All right? So we need to figure out what is the maximum and the mi or the minimum point of this graph. Well, the maximum, this graph is going to keep on going up to infinity. So it doesn't have a max, but it does have a minimum point. As you kind of follow along these points, you can see the minimum is right here, and then the graph keeps on going up. So the vertex is going to be that point where our minimum occurs, which will be at 0, 0. 
Now the next thing we need to look at is what we call our line of symmetry, right? When we were talking about geometry symmetry, you know, as we're going to see, when you have one half of a graph is exactly the same as your other part of your graph. And what you can do is if you kind of take a look at this graph, you look at this left side, if you were to flip this over the y-axis, it'd be exactly the same as the right side. So therefore, our line of symmetry is about this vertical line. And that vertical line, in this case, happens to be the y-axis. So we're looking for our axis of symmetry. It's a line. It's not a point like the vertex. So the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 0. So when x equals 0, that's going to be your vertical line. So our line of symmetry is going to be x equals 0. And you can see that's where the graph reflects about it. And that's an important point with that axis of symmetry. Because when I know that axis symmetry, I put x in for 0, and I pick two points to the left and to the right. And the last one is let's look at the lex x intercepts. And let's look at the y intercepts as well. So the x intercept is where the graph is going to cross the x axis. And when we look at it, we notice it actually doesn't cross it, go on one side or the other, but it does intersect it at x equals 0. Um, and then it also intersects the y. It actually crosses the y-axis at uh, y equals 0 as well. So we could say that the x-intercepts and y-intercepts are when x equals 0 and y equals 0. So we could call these both a point of 0 comma 0. So there, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That's the important point for graphing what we call our parent graph of the quadratic. And then also determining our important points for our x and y intercepts of 0, 0, axis of symmetry, and our vertex. Thanks.